Talking about it, it, it turns on. It turns on. It's kind of s***, matter of fact. What? If you told a Colorado hater that uh, Deion Sanders would have these boys at 5-2 and two sitting right in prime position to take over a wide open Big 12, they'd probably be shaking in their boots. But here we are. It is the reality. Deion Sanders has done something that a lot of the naysayers and a lot of haters just can't seem to accept. And that's build a culture at Colorado. He's done it and he's done it in a great way. I, I know it might not look like every other SEC school, but I mean, hey, when you're out there in the middle of the mountains, you got to do what you got to do. How how you can do it but in just two years he's improved every single year and is about to be bowl eligible and have a record that they haven't achieved in almost half a decade this is a whole new team a whole new era and more importantly a whole new culture in boulder so today what we're going to talk about is some of the naysayers and how they were talking about at the beginning of the season mainly coach jb you know how he likes to talk and, and a few other things and more importantly i'm going to look at this team to see is it a team you know people uh, like the matt b diddies of the world uh are early on called this a AAU team compare Colorado to just talent in places and spaces but as we sit with uh, five and two we've, we've seen Travis Hunter go out we've seen Shiloh Sanders go down we've seen starting offensive line go down and in their place we've seen pretty good serviceable players that you would never heard of before that sounds like culture that sounds like a full football team and let's see what the statistics say let's see what at this midpoint of the season the type of culture that Deion Sanders has created and we can't do that without talking to the man Dion himself he's had some crazy sound bites this week so I'm gonna I'm listen to some of these sound bites we're gonna get into some facts about this season compared to the other season look at the past seasons because it wasn't just the season before Dion got hit that they were bad Colorado's been bad for a, a little bit so we're gonna take a look at that um and then whole, whole in totality in this video hopefully I can convince you that Dion Sanders is actually doing something positive out there in Boulder look man I know you hate to admit it but I know what you love to do and that's like this video because you're gonna like it you're gonna subscribe you're gonna hit that bell icon let's hop right into it coach how are you troy finnegan cu sports report that's three straight road games now where you guys have played three of the most complete games since you've been here is there something about this group that likes going and play environments we like to be booed and they say it and hate it that turns us on <laughs> it turns us on it's kind of sexy matter of fact that's how I felt when I played. I mean, I, I love to be on the road and get booed. And what? What is this old? I think he been hanging around Shannon Sharp and Ocho too much. Talking about it, it, it turns on. It's, on. it's kind of sexy, matter of fact. What? All right, let's let's get into the video, dog. Let's let's talk. <laughs> let's, let's get to some stats. I don't know what culture that is, but that's not helping my point. Um, let's talk about it. Uh, we talked about this, you know, uh, in that last video. Obviously, five and two, great moment here with the kids and that. And we're going to scoot your hat past because we got some new things to show you. Don't look at my embarrassing Texas Longhorns and what they do. <gasps> here we go. Lots of naysayers at the beginning of season, especially Mr. Bud Elliott. Y'all remember this? Y'all remember this? Y'all remember when this came out and everybody had things to say? So liquidation is losing seven players to Porto and one starter. Sorry, Bud. Um, come on. The, okay. Everybody was kind of shit. No, no, no. This is such a disaster of a college football program. There's no structure plan or path towards prime handpicked all of the dudes last year. They were in the portal for a reason. As we all witnessed. Now he refuses to leave campus to recruit high school talent. Interesting. The spectacular collapse of Deion Sanders, prime prep. People are pulling. Oh, that's something else. I don't know what that is. Um, when you were promised a genuine Louis Vuitton, but got, uh, Louis Vasquez, Louis. Uh, but yeah, man, a lot of people had a lot to say, man. A lot of people had a lot to say, man. What a freaking job. I mean, people was going crazy, dog. And this is a Florida State guy, by the way. So as you can see, the Knowles. Yeah. Yeah. So he's having a fun time. Look at let's look at the stop rate. The best defenses in college football at getting stops and preventing points. Here's the new top 12. This is a team in Colorado that's been said is a bad defense. They're terrible. That's the point. Uh, it's only Travis Hunter. Have you have you heard of Bentley? Have you heard that other linebacker who's leading them in tackles? Have you heard about this new hood guy who, who's coming in and servicing Travis Hunter and already has a pick or, or two picks on the season? Or I think he only has a pick, but he's he's coming in and making big plays. Yo, this is a team, dog. It's, this, this, this is a complete team. And the only reason why I'm making this video is just it's so weird to me that in the first year he was held to this standard. And then at the second year, he's doing things that we haven't seen in Colorado in the previous five years, it's almost like it takes time 
to build a program, all right? And, and, and maybe you thinking it's all glitz and glam is just because it's Deion Sanders. Like, can we? It's Deion Sanders, dog. Oh, my God, the media. It's Deion. If Bo Jackson or Tom Brady were, were coaching, the media would be slocking the clock. Like, I, I'm sorry. That, that's the way the life is. Y'all can't be upset because people aren't watching more Wichita State football games. I don't even think they play. They don't play Wichita State football games. I don't know. But you can't be mad that James Madison doesn't get more national televised games because Colorado's on at 11.45 Eastern. God, they be playing so late over there. <laughs> Jesus. Regardless, um, 74% uh, stop rate, 1.55 points, a dime. Not too terrible. I mean, this is an FBS dog. I thought I when I initially read this, I thought this was within the Big Twelve, but they are a top twelve defense when it comes to advanced. Rate. I love getting these advanced stats. And talk about uh, a culture. Talk about someone who you know. This is uh you know they don't they don't go get high school players even though this is a true freshman high school player one of the best offensive tackles in the country that has some things to say about Colorado. Let's talk about it. Really, you see what happens when you believe. You really just got to believe. Um, I took a big risk coming here. Trav took a big risk at Jackson State. I feel like no risk with no reward, you know? So don't go where it's like, you know, everybody goes there, everybody goes there. I feel like you should just come here betting yourself. And as you see me betting ourselves, we're starting to win some games. Hey, man. I like to hear it from the young gun. I like to hear it from the young gun, man. Um He's just talking more about the campus. He was talking about how sexy it is to get booed. Let's get into some, let's get into some stats because this is getting weird. It's getting really weird really quickly. Um, and we also got uh, this little well-off media. If we got time at the end of the video, we can talk about this. But let's talk about this 2024 team um, and compare it to a specific team. And that specific team is the 2016. So um, right here, do I have their schedule? Yes, I do. So this is where we are in 2024 within the first one, two, three, was it seven games? So we're seven games in. We're a little bit over the halfway part, uh, halfway portion of the season, and we are five and two. Not we. I'm not a Colorado fan just because my Longhorns lost. I saw y'all in the comments. Y'all was in my comments talking about I should give up being a Texas fan. I'm never giving up on Bevo, son. Right? I've, I've, hey, it's been a lot of pain. I say don't not just being embarrassed by Georgia. It takes a little more than that, okay? But uh, uh, as as I support my my prime time Colorados, uh, 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 the Buffalo Buffaloes, five and two coming into the season looks great. I want to show you. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the twenty. Oh no no yeah 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 I'm looking at the right one. So twenty twenty four, boom twenty sixteen. This is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten and three in the regular season. The reason why I'm starting here. This should be the goal. This should be the goal. First seven games. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're one, two, three, four, five. We are starting similarly to how they started this 2016 season. And this is important. This is a 10 win season. This is serious because as we go, as I keep showing you the other season, you're going to see this is a big benchmark season. This is this is what we should be uh, 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 aiming towards if we're Colorado or a Colorado fan. Because in 2017, one, two, three, four, five, we got five in, uh, you know what I'm saying, five and eight. You know what I mean? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry, five and seven because, uh, you know what I'm saying, how that go. Not great, not phenomenal. So um, we could also have a 2017 fate if Colorado don't act up. But we're, we're at five wins there. We've already eclipsed that. And then we get to 2018. This is This is disgusting. You know what this looks like? This looks like last season. You start off one, two, three, four, five, five and two. Again, five and two in the first seven games, and then just lose every single game. Um, I don't think that's gonna happen. We've looked at their schedule. Go look at that other video. It's it they have a nice schedule you set up to at least get two more wins. Easy. But to get to that 10 win marker, it, it's gonna it's gonna call uh, it's gonna take a little something. It, it, it's gonna it's gonna take a little something. But do I think they can do it? Yeah, I think they can, but they, they got to be elite here because the season can fall apart just like this. They, they went through a gauntlet here in 2018, and 2018 is the last time they had five wins. So, again, like I said, almost a half a decade of pain and misery if you're a Colorado fan. Six. Okay, this is uh, no, this is not bad. This is uh, this is six wins. Oh, no, or is it, unless this is game. Uh, oh, my goodness. What is Topping all over one, two. I thought that was the last. I thought that was the last season they had five wins. Or I guess the last season they started off. Sorry, that's the last season they started off with five wins. Five and two. One, two, three, four, five. Um, again, another five and two season. So I mean, I guess it was one of the last season they went five. They got four wins here, four and two. But I mean, it's the COVID year. It doesn't really it doesn't really matter. Twenty twenty one, absolutely abysmal. 
two, three, four, again, four and eight. Um, and then we go to 2022, the notorious <laughs> one and 11, completely in the gutter. And now we can talk about 2023. And the reason why I want to talk about 2023 in particular is because I kind of want to compare this one a little closely because it's a similar crew. It's a similar team that's been called this and that and naysayed. So first seven games, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we are three. We are four and three instead of being five and two as us being five and two here coming at going against Cincinnati, which is a team they should be able to handle. Texas Tech is going to be a bit of a, a, I think a challenge in Utah. I think they should be able to roll. Kansas can be up, up and down. They got an explosive team and Oklahoma state can be up and down because they've been playing bad football and good fo football. So that's going to be interesting. But for right now, Cincinnati, they get this win and they're bowl eligible, something that they haven't done in over that half decade mark that, that I was talking about. Um, so it's, it's going to be really great to see if they can go ahead and achieve that going back to the 2016 levels. Again, we're trying to, if you're a Colorado fan, you need to be looking at going for 10 and two. You need to be looking at trying to get to that, uh, uh, what's it called, 2016 season. But as we see here, going back to 2023, uh, we, we pull off a shocker against TCU, an, another uh, banger shocker against Nebraska, even though Nebraska was a bad team, that double overtime thriller. Then you got to play, I mean, you play Oregon and USC. You play two wagons of, of a team in, in Oregon and USC. You've been, you went against Arizona state you lose against stanford which is a game you should have won you lose against ucla which is i think a game you should have won you lose against oregon state i mean these are winnable games dog and some of these they got blown out and it just was what it was like in washington state they had that crazy offense so but uh, some of these other teams it's like like this they let stanford come back like this was a team that was you know not disciplined yet that wasn't there yet they wasn't fully matured yet but this 2024 see, i mean look at this dog this, this is a complete improvement. They're doing it, uh, I think, against some some more uh, better opponents. And he, besides this Nebraska loss, which I really think was what woke them up. Oh, well, I didn't. I wasn't trying to. I wasn't trying to go in depth. Besides this uh, Nebraska loss, which I really think woke them up. I mean, this K State that was a winnable game. That was the, that was a few mistakes that they made. Like they they could easily be a six and one team um, at the at uh, you know the top of the Big Twelve here. Uh, but just the cookies crumbled in a different situation in a different way. Um, but I really think that they are primed and ready to rock and roll to do some things. But let's look a little deeper here because it's not just the statistical aspect of it, right? Because obviously Shador Sanders being top five offensive leaders, um, I believe. Uh, oh, I think he he moved out, but I, I thought they had a top ten guy in in tackles as well. And and then when we talk about total offense and total defense, yo, this is a this is a top to mid ish team uh, offense in the nation and the number two red zone defense in the nation and the top thirty red zone defense in the nation. Like th these are real deal stats. The the number uh, I would say number ten, top fifteen uh, total passing attack in the nation. But then again, they they throw it more than anybody. So it is what it is. This is a team with an identity that needs to run the ball a little more. I need, I need to run the ball a little more. But they've created an identity. They've created a culture. And why do I say they created a culture? Let's talk about the culture problem. Let's, let's, let's listen to it. Eon in Colorado's way this season. Let's talk about it. Athlon Sports dropped an article Friday night alleging a pretty chaotic locker room scene in Colorado. One former athlete is quoted in the article describing it like a real-life Grand Theft Auto video game in which he says there are many distractions, fights, guns, money floating around. It's an environment unlike anything he has ever been in. Now, the first allegation that is laid out in this involves Shiloh Sanders, Dion's oldest son on the team, and Cromartie McClain. For those unfamiliar with McLean, he was the key piece in Dion's first recruiting class at Colorado, the number one ranked cornerback in his class, five-star kid. In the article, there is an alleged incident after the Oregon State game in which Shiloh Sanders repeatedly slaps him and gets in an altercation with McLean, which McLean leaves yelling, I will kill you. Now, there was apparently a lot of bullying put on McLean during the season and which led to him basically checking out mentally in the program. He has now transferred to Florida. Another alleged incident of bullying involved. And, you know, now we fast forward and we get the full story on that. And it seemed like, you know, Carmine might have just been dicking off a lot and he was getting bullied because he wasn't doing the shit that he was supposed to. Luckily, Carmine has turned around at, at, at Florida and, and has been able to improve. But these were the things like that people were talking about. Um, and not only is this weird, but just like this comment says like, yo, this is just normal. Like this is a bunch of young uh, people who 
smash their heads against each other yeah dog they're gonna fight yeah dog's gonna be some weird stuff and is there gonna be money around yeah sure dog is there gonna be guns around i, I don't even believe that it's boulder colorado dog i do y'all forget that this is the universe like universe got colorado got some money nah. like this is this it's some whites that go there like it's not just gonna be you know what i'm saying like i just it, it just it was never believable and now that you know what i'm saying we're in it it, it's it's doubly not believable because then you get into season and y'all y'all forgot this i didn't forget this but y'all y'all forgot this not a shot at any other program and god georgia that it, it transpires but georgia our kids ain't getting in trouble man george i'm sorry i'm just <laughs> we got some good young men in this locker sorry. room and i think they should be applauding them regardless of what you say or think about them regardless of how they perform or how they don't perform this week they get it right and perform the next week and they're not getting into trouble and guess what the gpas are tremendous mm. Mm. look man there's a lot of naysayers out there there's a lot of naysayers right and this is one of my favorite naysayers uh, uh I, I love uh what's it called what he has to say so most recently uh on the coach jb show this is the this last thing we'll, we'll pop up out of here uh, they were talking about how Colorado looks like a football team, but everybody's favorite hater had this to say. I just kind of want to get this point off. We'll look like a here. real team. Like, it looks like a serious team that's coached. There's a culture there, true. obviously, and there's improvement there in my eyes. Dog, I think that that everything that we've seen is a learning opportunity. And look, I, they're not going to – I didn't think they would go undefeated. But looking at the rest of their schedule, I think they should win every game they play from now on. See, I only think they play that way when they're shitty teams, though against shitty teams I, you know what i mean like does that make sense if i told i know you don't hate to i know you hate to hear this narrative but if i told you that before the season we were like oh fuck man this league is much, way better we all said it like steve kim yeah. and i and, and smitty and and we had a discussion we're like fuck i i don't see where they get six wins at because pre preseason let's just talk pre this schedule was like oklahoma state's supposed to be this and this yeah and this, they're, and all, they're, they're all these teams are shitty and the league is turning to be actually shitty and, it, and I know you hate to hear this, and I, and I know you're an insider. You see the building and the culture change and all these things. But if the naysayers and the haters, like me and, and everybody, if I, were to say, if I were to say like Matt, I think it's the same team as last year. I just think the conference is that bad. I think- oh, geez. Well, I don't know. What do you think? Get in the comments. Do you think Colorado is benefiting from a worse conference? Do you think the culture is finally here? Do you think that Dion's making real improvements? Leave a like on this video if you like it. Dislike if you don't like it. Uh, please go leave JB uh, lots of positive comments because that was the first time he sounded like a reasonable person. I'm not mad at that take, actually. I think it's something that can be talked about. But me, I believe Colorado and Deion Sanders has created a culture. They've done something that a lot of people thought they would never be able to do. Um, you know, they, they got a son uh, not only in the top five when it comes to uh, a throwing uh, and, and overall uh, receiving, I mean, passing yards. But then you, you think about where he's talked about in the NFL draft right now. I mean, it's absolutely exceptional. So great job by Deion. Great job by Colorado. Y'all be phenomenal, though. We'll see you next time.